Hello, hello. Welcome back to the Lane Book Club podcast. My name is Melissa. I'm Ellie. And today is part one of Era Fire. Woo-hoo! Woo-hoo! I've been waiting to get to the latter half of these books in this series. Honestly. And we're here. Honestly. Finally. It's, it, <laughs> love, I love you, SJM. You yeah. are the first, you know my heart. But those books are so different than the rest of these. And Un- it, honestly, it's though, a little it's bit just difficult to get through. It's just because they're her books. And it's because, like, I think if I read these books and it by another author, I'd be like, oh, wow, that was interesting. But because I know they're her books and I'm comparing them to her no. books, well, I'm just no. saying, I think I'd be a little I bit mean, less yeah. critical if it was an, a different author. It's just because she, I hold her to a high standard because of her I get that. talent I get and that. because of her other books. I hear what you're saying, and I understand how you're seeing it and how you're feeling it. Couldn't be me because <laughs> they were just so YA, and they were just, there was no fae. There was no fae. I'm not that's here for so the true. humans. And that's really hard for me to read about. It's almost, it was almost a self-help book. No, I'm just <laughs> oh kidding. My gosh, I would never disrespect you that way. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, you're right. There was no fae. I think there was enough, like, talk about magic, though, to, like, still keep my interest without there being fae. Mm-hmm. So it didn't bother me. It bothered me more about how young adult it was versus the fact that there was no fae. Like, it still felt very fantasy and yeah. very, um... I don't know. I guess fantasy still felt fantasy without it being like fey fantasy, yeah. and they still mention fey, even if we didn't so get any fey briefly. characters. So briefly. Also, yes, there was you know Dorian's magic came about, but he's still human. And what else? Wasn't that it? Oh, and then there was some creatures. But there that, some creatures. I mean, that is not enough to satiate how much I want pointy eared. <laughs> beings in my life <laughs> that was it's so true no. that's so, so true here we are guys we made it now we, we have some fey let's do it we have the pointy ears so ellie is good <laughs> yeah also um, should we what? actually start with an intro did anything crazy happen in your week i cut my hair nice. short you did the chop so i did the chop if you're watching you've seen that already if you're not just know <laughs> it's short um it's I love like it slightly above my shoulders and i it's a lot of fun i've been wanting to do this for so long and i'm finally in a place to do it and i did it and it's good for you did have not once had buyer's remorse thank you that's really good for a haircut i don't think i could ever cut my hair even a trim and not have buyer's remorse i'm immediately i'm remorseful during the cut i'm (laughs) crying i hate it one time i got bangs you can imagine how that went (laughs) horrible (laughs) I love the feeling of my hair being cut when you're, you know, yeah. they like your hair is kind of wet, your head's tipped forward a little bit, and I can feel it all the way to the top of my head when they cut the no, hair. You can't. I sure can, and it's glorious. What? Maybe you not all the feel... way to the top of my head, but <laughs> I feel the strands. You being are not cut going to lie to me and all of the book club podcasts saying you feel right. your hair being cut to the scalp. Okay, no, no, no. You're misinterpreting. You're misunderstanding what I'm saying. I feel the sensation. I don't like feel the hair. It doesn't hurt. Like <laughs> that is. I'm not misinterpreting. No, it that's sends, what like, I think ting- you're saying. Okay. And I'm. Calling I know BS. I'm not the only one. I know I'm not <laughs> the only one who understands what I'm trying to say and feels the tingly sensation. Maybe not tingly. I don't know. It, 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 I feel it. I don't know how else to explain it. I feel it and I like it. <laughs> I love cutting my hair because I like right. it. Oh, you know what it is? Nope. I figured it out. It's what the is noise. It? What is it? It's the noise of this the scissors has, cutting through my your hair. Your story has changed <laughs> so much. But Welcome I will to the accept inside your of my final brain. answer. <laughs> so Welcome to the Lamb Book Club podcast, everyone. Welcome to the um, podcast, and also welcome to the inner workings of my mind. This is how crazy I am 24-7. <laughs> I love it. That's why we're it's friends. Fun. It is. It's um, so fun here. <laughs> well, the last couple weeks, we've been doing bonus episodes. Uh, we did one earlier no, this my week. my week was fine. Thanks. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you had a way more eventful week than I did, and I suck. Ellie, what did you do this week? Did you go to Chicago by chance? Just randomly. 
I did. I went to Chicago for a work trip. It, for legal purposes, if anyone from work is listening, was so educational. But in real life, that was so awful. Um, it was slow. It was boring. I am an accountant, guys. The I I had a couple Hollywood moments where, like, in the middle of these sessions, I would look out of the large windows upon the birds flying by in the blue sky and just be like, if only <laughs> like, I just I want to be anywhere but here. <laughs> no, but after that, my husband and I uh, went to the Ice Cream Museum, which turns out is for children. And I would not recommend if you are above 15 years old. He We dove into a sprinkles pool, which is just disgusting, slimy plastic, touched by all the children. It's not Horrific. even real sprinkles? No. They're I mean, I think that'd be worse. Of, it's like but... the plastic ball, like the ball pits you would oh, go into, yeah, but yeah. sprinkles. Um, super fun though. If you're a kid, I think they would have a blast. But for me, no. Um, At least lying. Then, she had the best day. <laughs> I did have the best day because I did something new. We did tufted rugs. We made tufted mm. rugs, and that was really interesting because I had no idea how any of that worked. I made a small rug to warm my tootsies as I wake in the morning. <laughs> And I just want everyone to know that Ellie, before she told me she was doing this and I was super jealous. And so she sent me about seven options of different like rug styles that she liked and she didn't know what she sent it to me specifically because she's like, I don't know which one to choose. So I told her which ones were my favorite. And she's like, yeah, I really like that one too. Then yep. three hours later, I get a this text how saying, it goes. <laughs> changed my mind. I went with a fish. I did a can of sardines. And can of sardines! There's no rhyme or reason, really, except for I have this inside joke with Grant where he hates tin fish, and I claim to love it, but I truly think I hate tin fish as well, but it's too late. I'm so far gone into, like, berating him with, how could you possibly hate tin fish? It's so good. And actually, I think I don't mean that at all. Having eaten some in front of him, I smelled like cat food, and I was over it. <laughs> but I doubled down, and so I did a little tin fish rug. All that I, to don't say, think, I don't think yeah. I've ever in real life experienced a moment of, wow, that can only be funny if you understand more so than you explaining the tin fish joke between you and Grant. <laughs> I'm sitting here and I am wondering if everyone else listening is going, okay. <laughs> I'm certain of it. And now I'm flushed and it's hot so and I would like to get back to the book. <laughs> All right, well, back to the book and what I almost cut Ellie off from saying earlier. Uh, the last couple of weeks, we've been doing bonus episodes. And so earlier this week, we released one talking about unpopular opinions in the book world, um, which is fun. It's fun to have different opinions. It's fun to yeah. share them. It's fun to honestly disagree as long as it's respectful, because who's mm -hmm. to say they might change your mind? Well, and that's what um, after creates a book it? community, right? Like, that's exactly. what creates a community in general, is people who have differing opinions that get to share them. Because otherwise, yeah. we're all mindless lemmings agreeing with one another, and that's the end of the conversation. Hey, do you like this? Yeah, I do. Goodbye. We're done. That, so it's fun to bring up normal different Normal SpongeBob <laughs> possibility. <laughs> I'm, I'm normal. I'm, <laughs> I am normal. Honestly, that sucks. And so it's fun to have... It's fun to come up with theories, even if it's wrong. Okay, fine it's fun to talk about it and yeah. i can wish disney's whole thing is wishing on a star <laughs> oh, i can do so, that too oh, don't even get <sighs> me started i'm a i'm not but i am i don't like that movie wish that's another the, thing i did this week is watch <laughs> wish i don't I've like it, it for the go ahead i no. guarantee you i've watched it more than you and you have a three-year-old so go ahead and tell me i guarantee you haven't because i think i've watched it 500 times this week <laughs> that number's not real. Tell me the real number, and I bet you I would have watched it more. No, no like, I actually but, don't think I have. Yeah. Anyways, but, I agree. Keep saying what you're going to say about the movie, because I think I agree. Okay. I don't like the animation style. It looks like a hacked it's supposed up to be like rendering. A book. No, it's supposed to be like it, a story. Okay. I follow a guy who does um, Disney animation. Mm -hmm. uh, I forget his name. It's Ryan something. Um and he does, he shows the renderings from, you know, storyboarding to yeah. the final product. And each level of the final product or like the, the rendering yeah. is just a little bit more detail, a little bit more detail. Yeah. They have a whole team for just shadows. They have a whole team yeah. for, 
you know, all of this. It's 27 frames Wait, per second. Wait, pause, pause. Yes. Could the shadow team be... Are they shadow daddies, if you will? Ew. They actually Aha! are probably all fathers, so yeah, that, that would. Gross. No, not <laughs> that kind that. of daddy. <sighs> all right. I I'd only like said to cut that. this out of the <laughs> Nope. I only said that to bother Ellie. Um, continue right, with the renderings and the stages. Let me keep nerding out about the animation. <laughs> I nerd out, guys, because I went into school to be an animator for Disney specifically. And, and then came out did- an accountant. Yeah, one class of animation and was like, this ain't it, Chief. But, so Disney, their quality is 27 frames per second. That is, an in- like, just to give you a brief, whatever, my, like, most detailed animation in that class was five frames per second. And the thing comes out kind of choppy, but it gives you the gist. 27 well, is I mean, insane. That's 27 different animated drawings Every For second one you're second. watching something. Yeah. Yes. I mean, that it's sounds intense. like a lot. <laughs> it's intense. So this just looked like they cut the shadow team. They cut the hair team. They cut the fine line. Like, it was just, it was so, not choppy, but just lacked so much detail that is Disney that gives them that general, like, oh, that's a Disney movie. But yeah. it was the same style of drawing. Like, the eyes, like, they just have this, it's so hard to explain I can no, hear no, it perfectly mean. in my brain, but it's coming out all wrong. <laughs> but anyways. This is how I, it's how it feels to be me and communicate something in my head. This is what I was feeling like when I was trying to explain how I cut my, feel my hair being cut. <laughs> it's I'm there. Glad we're both I just having one of these moments. relay it to you. <laughs> I wish I could passion just, I feel. I wish I could airdrop you my thoughts and so you can <gasps> understand. <laughs> when will that be invented? I want Probably that. Probably like 10 years. That's, I feel like we're, everything's anyways, coming out. Outside of that, See, the music though was so the music good. Is I loved so it. Good, honestly. Yeah. I've been singing. Um, you're a star. Look at <gasps> world. Here you are. I've been singing that all week <laughs> because that's Holland's favorite song. She goes, "Yeah, play the one with the squirrel." That's a, that's how she describes it because she likes that the animals and the trees are singing. Uh-huh. Um, no, but I agree with you. The animation really bothered me the first three thousand times I watched it, but then um, it clicked. One time, because it opens with a book, and I realized, oh my gosh, they're animating it like it's, like, I think they tried really hard to make it cool, Mm -hmm. and it just flopped. And honestly, I think the style of the animation is half of the reason why the movie did not do well in theaters. I guarantee it. It's because I think people saw it, and they're like, that looks weird. Yes. That is the main feedback that I saw from people Mm -hmm. talking about it before it was released, is that... Why would they put out such a low budget film? It's Disney. Why, where'd their standards yeah. go? But I knew, I knew, like I knew going into this that they changed their art style on purpose to give yeah. this a little bit more zest. However, I do not think it hit because it's so similar to that Pixar style, Frozen esque looking yeah. animation, but it wasn't, it wasn't there. And so it looked like kind of a half assed attempt. However, I will also say if it was storybooked style, like that's what their intent was, yeah. then freaking come out with a regular 2D animation Princess and the Frog style yeah, maybe. movie. Because that movie didn't come out, you know, way back when. I remember yeah. seeing that in theaters. It was when I was a little that bit older. That was like older, not long before that was Frozen. A, yeah, it was a 2D animated film. So it's not like that style's out of date. That film was a yeah. slap. So I think they could have done One the same thing. One of my favorite Disney movies ever. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I agree. I... I also think that the they tried way too hard to make a concept work that didn't. Like, I think they... I don't know if this is always how stories are written. And I also didn't expect to talk about Witch, Wish for this long on our episode, but you're lucky, no, everyone. I'm almost thinking, uh, like, should we cut this entire I just thing one out? More th- <laughs> I just want to finish my thought and then we just move okay, on. But the, I feel like they came up with, like, oh, we want to have a movie that ties in wishing on a star since that's like Disney's OG concept. But then they did not execute the storyline on how that would come out. Well, like, yeah, I, I feel like it didn't even, I didn't had I had zero idea that outside of the fact that it was the movies called wish and there is a star and she wishes on a star. I had no idea that they were trying to tie in other movies until the very end when I saw all the credits. And then the second time I watched it, I realized, oh, one time Asha's wearing a 
a, like a cap and a hood and it looks like the fairy godmothers and she has a mm-hmm. wand in that scene oh mm-hmm. there's another time where um, all the friends reference... are like the little dwarves exactly like like mm-hmm. there's now then i saw it but i didn't get that initially until i saw the credits and so i feel like to me that says they did yeah. a bad job exactly exactly but... and just to i don't i just didn't like how that's like the origin story of the star but it's very like non-impressive movie i guess for that yeah. kind of impact something that ties into every disney movie i feel like you really needed to have gone out with a bang and been like this is the origin story of the star like that would have it was just very mid i'm yeah. gasping a little bit because i'm realizing that this entire conversation is in tangent from us talking about having differing opinions within our book community <laughs> and that really got away from us <laughs> that is it's ADHD so at did. its finest and i'm medicated which is saying something i think i need to up my dose um all right well if you enjoy our random tangents and also have them, like, subscribe, or just do it even if you don't. I promise we're cool, and I yeah. promise we're fun. Um, you can skip through this, too, if you didn't, if you don't want to listen to it. Uh, but listen to our, our the meat of our episode, because it's good, I promise. Um, but yeah, like, subscribe. Join our Discord if you haven't already. We have the link saved in a highlight on our Instagram. It's at Pod. Yeah. Um, we Please. recently added a channel talking it's, about our bonus episode from last week just talking about all the akatar theories what we want from the next book um what we think is going to happen um all the all the fun akatar 5 things so um join that channel we're also going to be adding a new channel it'll be live by the time this episode goes out but just talking about un uh unpopular book theories or not even theories just opinions mm-hmm. um we like i we mentioned earlier our we have a bonus episode that came out this week where we talked about that. Um, go listen to that and then jump in the Discord and tell us what you think about those theory, uh, thoughts and or your own. Um, yep. We love to talk about them respectfully. Yes. It's fun. Respectfully. Practice kindness, everyone. <laughs> Remember that these differing opinions are what brings us our community. So Yes. And while Ellie said something I liked uh, to me earlier this week, while the characters we are talking about are fictional, all of the people talking about them are not, and they have feelings. So if you keep that so in the back be of nice. your mind, yes. But all that to say, we are starting air fire, and you're you jump. Okay, cool. I didn't even have to ask. You're ready. Let's just jump in. You can ask Chapter me anyways one. if you want. Are you ready? Yes. <laughs> okay, I thanks for the suspense. Um, also, just a really quick disclaimer before I forgot to say this, so I'm glad you paused. Um, th- I forgot how much this, how many different storylines are all happening at the same time in this book. And quite literally, every chapter, I think except for the first two, jumps back and forth between different stories. So I am going to do my best to make it not feel like Michael Scott giving three vasectomies, but... <laughs> It, snip, snap, snip, snap. Snip, snap, snip, snap. It is going to jump around a oh, lot. Well and said, I, Melissa. <laughs> thank you. I just need you to bear with me. And that's all. All right. Chapter one. Selena is lounging on the roofs of, it's Varis, right? That's how you say it? For a second, I lost my mind and I was like, it's Valaris. Are you, s- <laughs> never mind. Yeah, Varis. Uh, Varis, okay, cool. <laughs> the capital of, capital of Wendland. Uh, where the king of Otterland sent her in the last book to assassinate the crown prince Galen Ashriver. She has decided to not carry out her mission, which we already assumed and knew about, but instead decided to wallow in her hopelessness and powerlessness. <laughs> um, wait, wait, this honor- really threw me off because she left. I know. Like, kind of on a stride, kind of like, all right, I'm going to Wendland, like, you're sending me, but I'm, you know, because the, the book ends with Kale is unknowingly sent her to her allies. So you kind of have this mind of like, oh, now we know who she is. Now she's going to go somewhere and get some help and come back and defeat the king. And this is this is where it all starts. But she shows up and she is sloppy. And I and I will say off. you're you're right. Us as the readers, we knew why she was being sent to Wendland. 
But mm-hmm. Selena didn't know. I and I think I have to remind myself she was not privy to Kale's plans and or why he even suggested sure. it. And so, but even with that being said, I felt like she we ended Crown of Midnight with her being in a slightly better place. Um, like she's still sad about Nehemia, but I feel yeah. like she was able. She went to her grave. She sang that song. She, but I she mean, also she's gotten made closure. that promise at the grave. Do you remember that when she cut her hand yeah. and was like, "This, I swear to you, I'm going to redeem Elway for you." Yeah. That is the fire under her butt that she left exactly. with that caused me to think she was going to show up with that same fire in her and raise totally. hell. But instead, she shows up drunk and a mess. And I was really, I was like, "What chapters did I miss?" I know, but. Well, something happened it. on the two to three on week boat right voyage. <laughs> yeah. Um, and as we kind of were just talking, in honor of her late friend Nehemia, Selena plans to seek out Maeve, the queen of the Fae, who is immortal and therefore may be able to help her find a way to free Otterlin from the demonic king. Um, so she kind of gets there on her own as far as like Kale's plan, but mm-hmm. um, it took her a hot second of being drunk and disorderly. Um, a fey warrior named Rowan approaches Selena and tells her that Maeve has summoned her. He has a striking tattoo in fey writing going down his face and body, and she reluctantly follows Rowan anyway, uh, because she needs, she had already decided in her mind that she needed to see the queen of the fey. Mm-hmm. All right, next chapter, we're back to Kale, and I just can't, honestly, <laughs> It starts the summary of this one. Kale is essentially plagued by his knowledge of Selena's true identity and the threat that she poses to Dorian. Are I, you kidding that me? That actually sends a fire in my tummy. I want to punch the air when I he hear that. He knows her so well. He knows her not just intimately if we're going to be crass, but he knows her heart. He knows if she wanted to do anything to Dorian, why Look wouldn't at she everything have done she it when just she's there? Did. Yes. Like, I get I get what I think he means, like her being a like royal blooded blood heir sure. of the Terrison family is like more mm-hmm. of like her the idea of her as a threat. I I'm I'm assuming that's what he meant. But regardless, I'm just like, are you fracking kidding me? And then also he talks thinks about like how his loyalty is split between them, but his main priority is Dorian. I I don't even want to talk about this anymore because I'm getting angry. And it's so frustrating. Kale, Kale is starting such now. a simp for Dorian. And that is... He is yeah, literally such starting a simp now for Dorian. Is where we were no, like, I mean, it Kale's started out. In 2024, Midnight. Kale's out. <laughs> it started in Crown of Midnight, but then he redeemed himself for me when he saved the dog and everyone and like by jumping into the portal. But yes. he's back on the outs now after this, just this one thought about him. Yeah. Thinking that she's a threat. I can't even. It's over. He's back. Well, then, Kale and Dorian attempt to mend their friendship after the events in Crown of Midnight. And then Adian Ash River. Adian is described as the infamous general of the north and cousin to Aelin Galathinius. Um, he arrives at the castle summoned by the king. And I like Kale- how you have on the outline, parentheses 20, as if... I'm your professor waiting for you to cite your sources and what page you found that on. It is so ingrained in me. I had to write so many papers in college. <laughs> this whole I don't think I'll ever stop. In MLA format. <laughs> it it so is, you guys. I uh, no, it's not. It's Chicago. Uh oh. we didn't do MLA in college, but even though everyone in high school said that they're pre- preparing us for college, ugh. I also have a bone to pick with every high school English teacher because of that. I actually did um, do MLA all through college, and we went to the how? same college. we went college. to the same college. So I have no idea. No, wait, Maybe I did APA. Sorry. We did <clears throat> APA, not MLA. Oh, I think I actually did do APA. You're correct. It wasn't Chicago. That was my bad. It was APA. But regardless. Yeah. Um, Kale is wondering how an Ash River can serve his enemy, but then notices that Adian is wearing a black ring, just like the king and his most faithful servants. Bum, bum, bum. So he's been turned, according to Kale. 
All right, jumping again, different storyline. Actually, a completely even new character, chapter four. Actually, before we do, I just want to clarify, Kale doesn't know. Like, we as the reader don't know what those rings are. We no, just but know we they know... kind of show some servanthood to the king. Selena has, because she's been inside the clock tower, she's assuming that the king is using the rings to control people. Mm-hmm. But that's it. Like, and I think she even is assuming it's because of a word mark or a word key. But uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so we I, do think that the king, yeah. whoever is wearing those, is being controlled I by don't, the king. And she, if I remember correctly, she told Kale all this at the end of the last book. I believe so you're correct. Yes. I think he's in on what's happening. Yeah. Okay. All right. Chapter four, brand new character, brand new storyline. Um, Manon Blackbeak, heir to the Blackbeak clan of the Iron Teeth Witches, hides it as three village folk pillage her cottage and try to kill her. Before we dive too far into this, how do you say her name? Reading it? Okay, well, if we really want to do this. First of all, Ash River is Ash River to me. Galen oh. is Galen. <laughs> Adian, we've got correct. We are, we are one mind there. Um, Manon Blackbeak, reading it, and now this is going to sound weird, reading it, I read Manon, but it's one of those things where if I thought about the name, it was Manon. Is, See, does that make sense? Yes. And honestly, I am the exact opposite. When I read it in my mind, I said Manon, yeah. um, because I read with my eyes, people. So <laughs> that's how I pronounce it. But when I say it, I say Manon. And I don't know why, because mm-hmm. in my head it's Manon, but it just comes out. Honestly, I go back and forth and I'm not even going to apologize. I'm going to say it differently probably every single time. That's but okay. My heart wants Manon, and that's how I identify her name. In the early, I think this is a sign of maturity, because in the early <laughs> stages of this podcast, dude, we were stopping each other left and right for like, that's not how you say his name. That's I know. not how you say her name. And later on, you'll notice we stopped correcting each other. And maybe once in a while, we'll be like, oh, I actually say it this way. But you know, who knows? And the end of the day, here it is. We're all reading this. There is no guide unless there's a guide. There is. There is a pronunciation guide, but I disagree with it. That's fair. Also, no, the pronunciation guide for her name is so vague. Literally, right. it's, no, it's because her name is spelled M-A-N-O-N. In the pronunciation guide, M-A-N is all capitalized and then it's dash O-N. Yeah, so Manon. So to me, that says man, Manon. Manon. But Manon? Is it then? I, Manon. Manon. On is definitely the last part. Whether you say Manon or Manon yeah. or Manon, <laughs> I, well, I don't think it'd be wrong, end. Regardless, we're all just reading and we all just have eyes and we all just have brains. Let's go. Yep. <laughs> and let's remember this conversation in about 30 seconds when we talk about the nuns, how we also say a different word very differently. Um, but anyways, Manon. Oh, I'm is... mad. I just saw the note. <laughs> We fought about this in real life. Okay, go ahead. So when we said we're mature, we're we're not not. that matured. (laughs) Um, Okay, so she is uh, honestly first like opening of this chapter. I'm like, oh, my gosh, she's in trouble. Like these villagers are trying to seek her out. They're trying to kill a witch. That's so messed up until we find out that she was actually just trapping them and then decided to brutally gut them with her retractable teeth and claws. Yes. Uh, which is characteristic of Iron Teeth Witches. And I was like, oh, I was rooting for the wrong side. <laughs> I was all on board, like, oh, cool, a witch. Until they talked about how her retractable Iron Teeth teeth came I out. I had such teeth a hard time out. picturing oh, that. I could picture it now. It's so cool. But at, when I first read it, I was like, ew. I know. But now I it's I love so cool. how original the concept is. Like, way yeah. to go, Sarah, on that one. But I just had a hard time picturing it. I mean, to me, it's like having a mouth it's like having acrylic chrome you know how chrome is really in right now for your nails yeah. it's like having pointed chrome nails just layered like a grill on your teeth one might say teeth yeah and i'm just like it, that just seems uncomfortable thanks it that just reminds feels me uncomfortable of shark boy it reminds yes. me of wolverine's claws yeah and it reminds me of um bruce from nemo you're going to have to somehow make another reel like you did with oh, Bobby Yellow Legs with all three of those. <laughs> yeah, maybe I will. Um, anyways, uh, Manon enjoys her kill after weeks of unsuccessful hunting for the Crockin witches who are uh, from an enemy clan. All right. Now, here we go. 
I say crockin. The way you say that sounds like crotch, and I can't get behind it. It doesn't, crockin. because I'm not saying crotch. And it I'm also sounds crockin. like the cro- the kraken, like the pirates of the Caribbean kraken. If anything, it sounds like crockpot. Crockin. I don't like it. And well, here's why, is because it's pronounced crotion. And I'm so <laughs> sure about that, that I actually looked it up, and there is no evidence that it is pronounced crotion, and I, I still don't, it doesn't matter. Um, actually, there is every evidence that it's pronounced crotion because I looked, or sorry, crocken because I looked it up in the <sighs> I was so enunciation guide. Second. I don't remember exactly what it says now, but I remember when I looked it up, I didn't tell you, but in my mind, I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, also, no. we have a mutual friend whose last name is Cochran and it's That's spelled, a last name, but it's a name and, and it's, it's different. <laughs> it's not because it's spelled C-R-O-C-H. I don't remember how, but it's the, the first half of it is spelled like Crockin, not <laughs> Lindsay. If you're like... listening, it's Crotion. Your last name should be Co- Crotion. I don't know. <laughs> and all, no, no matter what you say to me, and this is really doubling down on how I've not matured, actually, it will be Crotion until I die. I think my last words on this earth will be, it's Crotion. <laughs> Excellent. I like that. All right. Well, um, I'm going to continue to call it Crockin, and you yeah. can call it Crotion, and everyone will know that we're talking about when one I of the When I write same. my outline, there boy, oh boy, it's game over for y'all. <laughs> oh, man. All right. So after Manon killed her first Crockin witch uh, 100 years ago, she stole the witch's distinctive red cloak and has been wearing it ever since. And I picture at that point her a little bit more like Little Red Riding Hood than anything else. Mm. <laughs> um, all right. Chapter six, jumping to another storyline. Dorian meets Sorsha, a healer when he uh who helps him when he needs some cuts on his hand seen to. He recognizes her from the many times that she's helped him, Kaol, and Selena, and also thanks her for keeping quiet about all their unusual injuries, which all happened in the last few books, and were all magic adjacent, and she shut her mouth. Um, unbeknownst to him, Sorsha has been secretly in love with him for years. This is my least favorite storyline in the entire series. Um, actually, outside of Kale. Um, kindly so, and respectfully, I disagree. This one, I really liked the storyline. However, reading it again, th- kind of through your eyes and through Taylor's eyes when she was reading it, as we were talking about it, and Taylor also hates this storyline. I think I liked it less because to me it looked a lot more like this was Dorian just needing someone to mm-hmm. be with. Like he couldn't just be single for a second. He needed someone to help yeah. him through Selena and all that. However, Sorsha was really sweet and I liked this. I take back um, in all of our other episodes about Akatar calling Elaine vanilla because I don't <laughs> think I realized what vanilla persona looked like until Sorsha was written. She is the most vanilla character ever. If she like je- she other all she does is simp over Dorian and heal people. She has no other personality traits. That is it. <laughs> I do Tell, feel like I need to agree. another one. <laughs> <laughs> I do agree with that. However, I just liked the simplicity, actually. I think that is why I liked her, is because everyone's kind of getting complicated. Kaol is a mess. Selena's gross right now. Dorian is a mess. Everybody's just a mess. And here's Sorsha just like, hey, by the way, I've always been in love with you, and let me heal you. And she's just innocent, easy, yeah. sweet. Now, like cherry when you put pie. It, when you put it in that angle... I like the idea of it. I just yeah. don't. I think it's because her character was so unremarkable mm-hmm. that I was like, you're kidding, right? Like this <laughs> hot crown prince who has magic is, I even pictured her wearing beige clothing. Like I, I did too. But because was... she embodies the color. <laughs> like it's true. It's, I'm just like, you've got to be kidding me. I don't know. But uh, moving on back to Selena. Uh, Rowan leads her to Mistward, uh, which is a mountain outpost, but also still miles away from the Fey city of Doranel. However, Maeve is waiting for her there and greets her as Aelin Ashriver. 
and this is most of this book it bothered me how sometimes she was Aelin and sometimes she was Selena. I understand at the end it's because she didn't necessarily identify as Aelin, but it bothered me that it, it's just like my it, it's not because the way it was written it's just like my personal um like thoughts and feelings on this this is now um I, I, we've talked about this in another episode she has like 14 names yeah. she's selena she's lilith as a secret identity um her nehemia gave her the nickname of alentia um her real name that no one actually knows except for like four people is aelin i'm just like Oh my gosh, there's then too add many in names. Two to other keep... last names. Ash Driver, Galathinius. I know. Yeah. Um, also, there's just a lot of names. <laughs> what are we talking about, real quick? Aelin and how her many names. Her names. I. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> it's fine. I did not like. I actually even sent a text to a friend while I was reading this for the first time saying, mm-hmm. Are we just supposed to call her Aelin now? Because yeah. I do not like that 180 switch. I... So I don't Said remember the them thing. actually reverting back to Selena and Aelin too much. I felt like it was mostly like Rowan insisted on calling her Aelin. Maeve called her Aelin. Everyone in Wendland was calling her Aelin. And that's, you know, she as much as she wanted to stay Selena, nobody really called her that. And so I was like, well, so we're just Aelin now? Okay. No, And then I got more I, used I to it. But I agree. It was, there were a lot of people that called her Aelin. Anytime mm-hmm. she was thinking about something, Referenced, though, it said Selena. Yes. Because she still like felt more like selena than aelin yeah but then she also introduced herself as alentia to everyone at mistward because she didn't want them to know her real identity yeah and so it is a lot of names it's a lot to keep up with that's i just i felt like we were back to the whole like lilith thing where no one actually knew what they were calling her and i'm surprised she doesn't have like needs psychiatric care for multiple identity at this point (laughs) she's split (laughs) oh speaking of i saw something so funny and it was oh like everyone gets along so well with you what is your secret and then it was a immediate take to the movie split in all of his different personalities (laughs) and i'm like that's me that's that's selena that's you (laughs) yep uh the chameleon personality is what Uh i like to call that (laughs) um all right, cool. So moving on. Oh, good news. It stays with the same storyline. Um, Maeve tells Selena that Pr- Prince Rowan, I we learn he's a prince, mm-hmm. will train her at Miss Word um, until she can prove herself because then she is not, or she's only, way well, she's allowed into Dornell is by proving herself. Yeah. However, uh, Selena and Rowan do not have a good rapport. They are immediately not friendly and they don't care for one another very much at all which we all know is going to lead into something amazing however i do want to pause for a second we did not talk about the description of rowan and i think we need to well i talked about how he's a tattoo on his face but that's about it (laughs) it is a a massive like tattoo that spans from his entire face down his neck down his arm shoulders back all the way i think down his legs too like just, I don't remember the legs, but I remember it going literally from his like hairline to his yeah. like uh pant like waist. Okay, all some kind of foreign writing that Selena doesn't know or Aelin at this point doesn't know what it means. And also, he has long white hair, smells mm-hmm. of pine and snow, is incredibly attractive as all Fay are. Naturally. And so, where was I going with this? I don't we- know. You said well, we just didn't we talk about bring, how he was described. We need to bring up how he looks, but also what we was your last We need to bring up that point? he's hot. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I just said that they don't have a good rapport and they... I I liked that the way this was set up, though, as far as them, like, not being, oh. um, like, friendly. Because yes. it, didn't, it didn't feel like enemies to lovers. It felt more like forced proximity and sure. i also love that trope yeah um because they aren't enemies they just don't like each other here's where i was going with this so when you just des- why i had we had to bring up his description is because when you describe a very attractive female in a forced proximity with a female who is newly single i think we all can kind of like jump to our own conclusions while it's not being said and this is the point where both you and Taylor were already like, this is the hill I'll die on. They're going to end up together. And we all kind of were like, yeah, I could see that coming too. However, when she saw Maeve, Maeve talked about, you know, she's Selena's 
aunt of some great distance. Yes. She's Rowan's aunt of some distance as well. And so yeah. then even Selena says, or Aelin says, so we're cousins, huh? And we're like, okay, so they are not a so love interest I, he, because they exactly are literally that. related. Yeah, I'm like, so actually this can't happen because I, and I knew it was going to, one, because like you said, the way it was just set up, two, because I didn't know anything about this story Mm -hmm. before reading. I made sure to avoid everything online that mentioned anything Throne of Glass, but I knew three characters' names. I knew Aelin, Rowan, and Dorian. Those are the only three names that I knew. And so I, because I, somehow those names slipped through the cracks, I knew he was going to be a big character then if Mm -hmm. everyone's, so that's why I just kind of assumed. But then the second it brought up that they were distantly related and the fact that she made a point to say she made a point to bring up, I was like, this is so backwards. (laughs) Why write it in? Number one, two, if you're going to write it in, maybe never bring it up again. He but literally they, could there have was just a pointed been... conversation of so we're cousins, huh? And Rowan's like very distantly cousins, yes. Yeah. Mm. Like I feel like she could have <laughs> written his character without that fam- familial tie and literally nothing would have changed about the story. 100. Nothing other than the fact that they weren't related. <laughs> yes. <laughs> distantly. <laughs> Anyways, we can continue on, but I yep. don't know if you wrote I'm glad that you brought in, that, up. that needs to be spoken on. Because not I enough s- people are like, what the flip? Talking about Even this. though I think we all think it. <laughs> You're so right. I did not write that in, and I'm glad you brought it up, because I forgot. <laughs> um, all right, well, now that we know that they're cousins, uh, <laughs> Selena <laughs> That's terrible. is talking to Maeve, and she also vaguely remembers that her parents wanted to keep her away from Maeve, but she didn't know why. No one ever explained that to her, but she has like this eerie feeling about Maeve, even though Maeve se- excuse me, seems to be fine at this mm-hmm. point. Um, also, the way they describe Maeve, I'm going to say this now, uh, 100% will always and forever be Mother Gothel in my mind. Mm. Um, that's exactly how she looks, and literally nothing anyone ever does, or no picture anyone ever shows me will change that in my mind. Um, all right, mm-hmm. back to Manon. Uh, Manon and her coven have been summoned by her grandmother, uh, the Black Beak Matron. Also, again, just really, I guess, quick caveat. I don't think... I fully understood until like the next book, the hierarchy between the witches and like the what is the difference between a coven and a clan mm. and I um, do remember you texting me about the however, you read like this the, after it took me fourth forever. Wing. And fourth that's wings, so true. like situation, that still confuses me. Who's the wing leader? Who's the See, that, whatever? For whatever reason, I understood that way more no. than I did these Iron Teeth Covens. I had to look at that graph for so long. I was at your house, and I yeah. all I was doing was staring at that graph for so long, and I could not figure it out. Like, I could, but then I'd turn a page and forget who was who. However, this, immediately. Like, I, I, I got think... it. And so I didn't understand why you didn't get it, but you could understand the fourth wing one so well. We're just you know, so opposite. No, you know what it is? Because you read these books first, and I read fourth wing first. Our we structures used... are set up. No, we used every ounce of brain power <laughs> we had to understand the one, <laughs> and that was That's it. That's where I end. It this is all have... I will ever, this is my fine dining and breathing moment. That's all I know. There's, there's no more reserves left for any comprehension of any other structure. Of, it's true. Because it's it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Um, all right. Manon's man in oh, coven called the 13 is the most feared and respected among the Iron Teeth witches. Mother Blackbeak speaks with a human duke before instructing the 13 to summon all the witches from the Blackbeak, Yellowlegs, and Blue Blood clans to gather at the Farian Gap. There, go ahead. No, finish this, then I will. Come okay. back. Um, it's there that the duke has been breeding wyverns for the king's army and now needs riders to lead them. I have two questions. No, I have one question and one thing. So go when I originally told a friend her name is Kelsey. I told her that I wanted to start reading Sarah J. Mass's works. I said I was going to start with Akatar. She said, you know what? You should actually start with Throne of Glass because while Akatar is, I think, a better story, Throne of Glass is so strongly written and so moving and it represents more of Sarah's writing style that mm-hmm. I think you would even like it more. 
and I said, thanks for your input, and I read Akatar first. <laughs> However, one thing she told me is that I would not get into Throne of Glass until the witches appeared. And in my head, I had such a solid picture of what that meant that I was seeing those three, like, fortune teller style witch ladies from Hercules that, like, share the eye, I think. Oh, yes. The, the Sears. The, the Sears, yeah. yeah. I was going to say, I think when that's they, what they're called. I yeah. thought that, like, in my and mind, that was it. them. So <laughs> not only did I read all of Throne of Glass, but then I remembered what she said, and I was like, where did they go? Like, where, when were they supposed to show up? Not putting together at all that That's the witches so were these, like, powerful 13. I'm waiting for these crusty old one-eyeballed ladies <laughs> to show up, and then the book gets good. So I think that's so uh, funny. I just th remembered that. <laughs> hey, I'm eight books in, and there's no mention of a witch. Yeah. <laughs> where do they come in? Where are the witches? Um, and then my question to you is, Wyvern are in this. Yeah. Did you have a better understanding of Wyvern before or after reading this because of how you read Fourth Wing and Iron Flame first? 1000% had a better understanding because they're not really ex de described much mm -hmm. in it's it's more just like the king is breeding Wyvern and it's like that's just a fact and then they talk about Wyvern. Mm -hmm. It's not really like this is what a Wyvern is and whereas I, fourth wing and iron flame really went into those details so i, don't I know because i remember definitely i think it was you and taylor suggesting that when the dragons in um iron flame if like one of their riders turned venom that the dragon would also turn quote venom unquote but then maybe they'd also turn into like that would turn them into wyvern and i was like no wyvern are a different species because i had read this first so i knew how wyvern were described so I wasn't sure if this kind of like peeled back the curtains of, oh, they don't look anything like dragons or yeah. if you had already kind of caught on to that. Well, and... I think that theory <clears throat> had less to do with the fact that, I mean, here's the thing, though. Every wyverns aren't an original. Th that's like a fantasy concept and it's right. used in a lot of books and they're all kind of different in every book. So I was wondering if that was more going to be Rebecca's interpretation of wyvern. Mm. like it's more wyvern are a, i mean i guess it's like a breed and it, it's a an animal to some extent yeah but they can have different powers depending on what series you're reading they can have yeah. different you know what i mean and so i just because this is how they were in throne of glass doesn't mean that they couldn't yeah. a dragon couldn't become a wyvern in a different book series oh so second question now i'm just a little hot little hot gas but a little hot conversation here too what did you think at this point of how how many similarities there were between Iron Flame, Throne of Glass, those two uh, series? I remember. I don't think. And Throne of Glass. I think just the fact that wyverns were mentioned, I was like, oh, mm -hmm. that's also in another book series. But they're also in the Ruthless Vows, which I I think I read. Yeah. Before I know. This, I mean, they're so. not they're not unique to any one story, but. No, yeah. I know that you and Taylor and I started tallying up the similarities between the two storylines, and we yeah. were like, okay, there's kind of I don't too many to, to ignore <laughs> at this point. Yeah. yeah, I don't remember at what point. It was during this book, I think, but I don't remember if it was this early on. I think mm -hmm. I was still tallying. I wasn't like, yeah, like this oh my gosh, been. they're way more similar than I thought they would be. But, mm -hmm. um, and it's because, I mean, the stories are still so different. The concept, there's a lot of similar themes, I think, that are yeah used in both but um all right back to um chapter 10 um uh, back to also rifthold we're with adian and all of them mm -hmm. again um after noticing some of his men deserted their posts to go to one of adian's infamous parties kl seeks the general out to rip him a new one <laughs> uh however he searches the tavern and kl reasons realizes that Adian is not even attending his own party. I knew it at this point. I was like, Adian is not the way he appears to be. And mm -hmm. I just had this spidey sense feeling that the second, cause he like uh, has this appearance of being a party boy and playboy too. And like, mm -hmm. I don't care what anyone thinks. I just, I kill and I have a good time. And I knew that it was a facade. So then I started, but the fact that he wore a ring still threw me off. So I was, that's you where know I was at with what Adian was at this point. 
good writing is introducing Dorian's cousin. What's his name? Roland? Roland. It was really smart to introduce him because his character equaled Adian's character to me. Like the level of no. depth. No, 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 no. Hold on. Hear me out. Not saying they're the same, but the level of depth in which they were written about originally of just like, oh, Roland's here. Roland's kind of like playing this role. He looks like he's serving the king, but he could really go either way until you're certain that he's one way over the other. Adian was kind of written that way. And so I kind of expected he really could That's go true. either way. Because I think initially I would have expected, oh, he's really working for the rebels or he's, you That's know, he's so really true. on Aelin's side. But because Roland was a very like, eh, okay, no, he's he's not a good guy i kind of was like adian could go either way since they're very similarly written so yeah i think roland was like framed as being a bad guy at first and then mm-hmm. you questioned it by the end yeah and i guess that's kind of i i just feel like it was a lot easier to question adian a lot quicker than roland but i see what you're saying and i actually do agree yeah at this up to this point i agree with what you're saying yeah yeah um all right back to selena um Selena decides, we already talked about this a little, bit, a little bit, but she decides to introduce herself as Alentia so that no one knows her name or is able to identify her. And she starts working as a scullery maid in Mistward. And because I'm <laughs> 12 years old, yes, thank you. <laughs> because I'm a child and have a child. And he, the first time I had ever heard the term scullery maid was in Trolls, the original <laughs> Trolls movie. Uh-huh. So I don't. She doesn't look like the Bergen Bridget to me in my mind, but that's the first thing I thought of was Bridget scrubbing the dishes in Trolls. Um, Grant almost named our cat the Scullery Maid because <laughs> of Trolls. <laughs> that's funny. Um, all right. While in the kitchen, uh, she befriends an older half-fay cooked, and I'm going to get to his name in a second, um, and his younger helper, Luca. His name. How do you, how did you say his name? Cuz I Emrys. Okay, I'm glad you said that because the entire series and I mean he's not in the entire time, but literally every not until earlier today when I was reading this outline. Mhm. I called him Emrys. Like I think I went back and forth. Name, as if his name was spelled E M E R I E S, even though that's not even how it's spelled, Emrys. that's how I pronounced it. And it wasn't until I was today years old that I even considered it was pronounced Emrys. But then once I said it, I was like, oh my gosh, that's right. And I've been doing it wrong this whole time. No, no. I think that is fair because I think while I was reading it too, I was saying Emrys, Emrys. Also, we're going to jump Crescent City. I heard so many people say Ethan. No, no, no. That man is Ethan. No. It's, I don't care how it's intended. It's Ethan. It's Ethan. <laughs> no, in my e- mind, to me, to me, it's Ethan or Ethan. I don't care <laughs> how the, what the intention was. Again, back to, I read with my eyes. It's Ethan. Just like Manon is not Manon or Mama na la la la, however anyone else wants <laughs> to say it. It's. All right. Chapter it's, 12. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's a hill I will die on. It's Ethan. <laughs> um. And her his younger helper, Luca. All right, back to Manon, Manon, Manalalala. Uh, the witches gather in the carved halls of the Omega, which is the mountain right next to the Farian Gap. Uh, they have a memorial service for ba 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 Yellowlegs, <laughs> <laughs> who was the Yellow Clan Yellowlegs Clan matron, and also the same witch that Selena had killed in the last book. Uh, human servants of the king led the Blackbeak, Blue Blood, and Yellow Leg matrons and their heirs, which um, Man- Manon was the Blackbeak heir, Petra was the Blue Blood heir, and Iskra was the Yellow Legs heir. We agree What'd on you all say? of those names. Oh, good. Mm-hmm. You know what's so funny? I'm glad you said that because I, again, was reading these names and I was like, I'll bet these three, it's undeniable. This is how you say these three names. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, the, human, the human whatever uh, servants, they take them on a tour of the wyvern hatcheries, which reminded me of going to the trout hatcheries growing up and <laughs> by my oh, house. Oh, the Folsom ones? Yeah. Yeah. The, the, nurs- the, yeah, the nursery. Yeah. You have to pay 25 cents for the worst smelling fish food ever and 
throw We're it in there to and say all that the out fish... loud on the internet now because none of us live there or have family there anymore. So we are fully. I have family there, but Ew. it's fine. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> Um, yeah, we both grew up in Northern California, everyone. So fun fact. Um, all right. The, they show the witches a bull named Titus, who was the biggest, biggest wyvern that they have. And Manon instantly decided that he will be hers. Back to Selena. Um, after her kitchen duty, Rowan leads Selena to a training site. Um, he asks her to shift into her fay form, but she says that she can't do it on command. Rowan then takes her to a field covered in white barrows. Um, not like the color, like W-I-G-H-T. Oh, I'm sorry. W-I-G-H. Oh, yeah. T-S. Um, and he challenges her to walk through it and promises to take her to Dornell as soon as she can cross it. Um, she's expecting to see a white, but Selena instead finds a strange dark figure waiting among the barrows. She's overtaken by a flashback to the night that her parents were killed and woke up in their blood-soaked bed. She then remembers the scene of Nehemia's murder right before Rowan suddenly drags her from the darkness. And he, all, Rowan is at a loss for words. He, like, does not know what that was. And I'm just, like, this reading this, I'm like, are you was kidding? so devastating, but also <laughs> I know. embarrassing. Because she literally talks about how her bowels turned watery. And I'm sorry, don't write that. Don't write that. Sarah and then loves that. She Sarah loves that. loves that expression. She loves that. And then all at the of end, her characters have watery bowels. I know. At the end I think of that, Crescent Selena City is the only series where it doesn't mention that. Maybe it does, though, once maybe at it least. Does. I don't know. I don't but Aelin, like, pees herself. And yeah. it's just to really emphasize it was how disastrous this was. It was humbling. And yeah. I wanted to get through it. Same. Mm-hmm. Um, and on that note, back to Rifthold. Uh, Dorian calls on Sorsha's services again and they start to get to know each other better Uh, the healer shares that the king's men aka Dorian's father uh, decimated her village but she now works for him because she has nowhere else to go and that was sad Mm -hmm. but I don't know All right. Uh, Manon's grandma makes her the Blackbeak wing leader um, after they attack not they, they didn't pick wyverns yet, but they got on the backs of some of them just to see how they ride. And obviously, Manon and the 13 crushed it. Mm-hmm. So she gets the wing leader title and orders her um, to she orders Manon to win the upcoming war games by any means necessary. I think at this point was when I started to be like, oh, there's a lot of similarities mm-hmm. between the fourth wing series and this also one. even like we down to the name. <laughs> get a little glimpse into Manon's grandmother and how Yeah, ruthless horrible she is. She is. And yeah. when I hear the word grandmother, I see this like wicked old witchy witch. Yeah. Just tall, still, you know, supreme, very long hair, pretty, but like grandmother style. But no, she would have been like a nice young face because they're immortal as well. I mean, not immortal, but they live long, longer. So especially, you're essentially picturing uh, Morticia from the Adams Family. (laughs) Basically, yeah. No, more wrinkles. Way more wrinkles. Yeah, I I pictured her. (laughs) I think I sent you a picture of what I pictured. Um, The whole young immortal thing missed me and it's simply because like you said the (laughs) word grandma was added in there yeah but uh i pictured her much more um old wrinkly with a lot of makeup to hide the old wrinkly and it wasn't doing anyone any favors (laughs) um i pictured her with long hair (laughs) long hair but it was like gray yeah Um, yeah so anyways i had it's safe to say that i never had a good image of what she tr- was written to look like mm-hmm. um back to selena she's beaten and bruised um and she's suffering through more training with rowan but she also still cannot shift into her fey form mm-hmm. uh, that night she listens to emery's emrys ah, well tell scary stories about dark fairies who um oh to captivate the audience and incidentally learns that rowan can shift into a hawk this is important because I think if we go back to the very beginning of this book, she notices a hawk following her before Rowan yep, ever that's so true. 
appears. So and I think it's at that point too that she also like I think puts two and two together. Yeah, maybe not. Maybe it was later, but yeah, um, it's not long. This is where our episode is ending. I apologize for being abrupt. I didn't realize that we were at the end. (laughs) Um, but it's either like just like not long after this, or maybe it's a little bit later. But after learning that, I want to say she even like looks the next time they're all gathered and telling stories at the window and sees a hawk and like then knows it's him mm. too yeah yeah, yeah. that happens probably at one also point, s- but while well, she's in her human form i was gonna say she could probably also smell him that pine and snow yeah i want listen i don't want can we talk about how people are s- described to be smelled and how unrealistic i was what just gonna s- say snow is water listen how does people, snow have a scent i need <laughs> A candle make... I'm sure there are out there. They are out there. I need a candle I need- <laughs> of these men's scents to really understand. If it's not explained as them smelling like cucumber melon, I'm not going to know what it means. <laughs> what is it? Cherry blossom from <laughs> Bath and Body Cher- Works? Japanese cherry blossom or nothing. <laughs> <laughs> it's not cucumber melon. Oh my gosh. But like, yeah. it, it is... And there's so many of the people that... And there's like seven What's of them. What's like-, like starlight and like dark matter jasmine beautiful (laughs) i'm like like how about some eucalyptus i don't understand and a lot of them will have at least some normal smells but then there'll be like 24 of them and i'm like oh my gosh like one character i don't remember who it was or what book it is but it's like and they smelled like jasmine lavender citrus verbena sea breeze i'm like oh that's tarquin's sea sea foam basically and the sea sea water and then that's I'm like, not, that's I'm just, stinky. I don't know if that's a good thing. <laughs> no, I was just naming off like a bunch of random. Uh, yeah. But I'm just like, what does that even smell like? I can yeah. smell them all individually, but I cannot picture what that would smell like as one. Yeah. Like, so again, I can picture smell pine, but the snow, I'm like, he must only smell like pine. Because I just snow is when scentless. you go when you go to Tahoe, as we've already established, we're from Northern California. So when you go to Tahoe, you step out of the car and you get that crisp, like, whoa, that like, oh, cold hits you in the face. I imagine so it's true. something fresh like that with the pine. You're mixing. so right. I don't know. So if that's the case, why not just say pine and fresh? Because that does Cause sound I... stupid. Pine and snow <laughs> versus pine and pine. fresh. You would pine? have the no. time of your life ripping that apart on this podcast if Dude, you I described know. him as pine and fresh. <laughs> You're so right. Pine and fresh linen. <laughs> That would be good. I think yeah, that would be well, a good candle. Hey, make it. Um, um, and on that note, no, no, let no. Let us know. No, no, oh. no. Oh, Come back, I'm everyone. Sorry. Turn the I'm volume so back up. Okay. <laughs> so, what does what defines? I think a fantasy book. One of the most defining characteristics is that we jump from story to story to story. Just how you were saying. You know, this is a lot of Michael Scott snip, snap, snip, snap, and consistently you're going to have a favorite out of all of these stories and it's going so to right. switch up based on how juicy each storyline gets and how boring the other one gets. Cause they might have a lull while Kale's really going through it and it's very good. So at this point in air fire, who are you ranking as your number one story? Selena and Rowan 1000% because even though I just knew I, I'm a hopeless romantic. Yep. And so I was hopelessly waiting for that to happen. And I honestly too, I think her self uh i'm not saying this right but like her uh self like character development Mm -hmm. um and like her healing journey that's happening throughout this story i also really was enjoying that too so yes one thousand percent that was my favorite and dorian and sorcia was easily my least favorite oh that's fair okay mine is obviously also going to be selena or a i'll call her ayla now ayla and rowan my least favorite for probably the entire series, I don't think you ever have to ask me this question again, is always Adian. I don't care what that man what? is doing. I'm bored out of my mind. The whole time? The whole time. Wow, hot take. Nothing I, he does is that impressive me. to me. I <gasps> am bored. He's not interesting. <sighs> I think that hurt my feelings a little bit. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> and but I took that personally. I took that personally. <laughs> Anyways, that's all, folks. See you next week. Love ya. <laughs> Have a great week, everyone. <laughs> Bye.